Well, what is this? I hear you all exclaim in shock and delight. That's right. We are back in Castle Doctrine, the world's premier wife killing simulator. No, I am joking, of course. It is the world's premier wife protecting simulator. It's just unfortunate that it seems so easy to kill wives, but that has changed. Oh, the list of changes since the last time I played are so numerous, I'm not even going to begin to cover them. I will cover the obvious things, but I'm not going to cover all of the numerous things that uh, the developer has done to make the game play better, to make it less exploitable, to address the increasing problems that plague the game and why I stopped playing for quite a long time. That is, not many players or the only successful trap would be a bit lock or it would be some ridiculously convoluted system. We've gone through all kinds of things like the, the maps. The maps are now gone. Long gone are the days of the maps. But let's uh, introduce ourselves to our family. I should introduce myself to my family. They are my family, of course. We have, oh, ha, Evelyn. What are you doing in another one of my Let's Plays? Evelyn, my lord. Jeremiah, <laughs> my God, am I a Kerman? I hope I am. And Courtney, no, Courtney. Well, actually, no, I, I know quite a lot of nice Courtneys. It's just unfortunate that I also know one or two bad Courtneys. Well, let's start, actually, by having a look at some of the differences. Now, control click an object in your house to copy it. That's actually pretty useful, but let's have a look. Prices have changed. Wooden walls are now $2.00. Steel walls are 40, concrete walls are 92. As you see, pits are 240, that was incredibly expensive. Some things have stayed the same, wires are actually quite cheap. Uh, wooden wired walls, uh, six, I don't remember what they were, but the electric supply is actually a lot cheaper now. This is encouraged electrical traps. All the, the switches, more or less the same. The lights, these are, I'm not sure if I've covered these before, but uh, indicator lights, and indicator lights are non-conductive. Uh, I'll actually demonstrate what these do. I'll put one there, and I'll put one here, and I'll put another one down here. Now, let's uh, quickly run a wire to this, there and there, and we'll get a, well, let's see, we'll get a regular switch by here and one by there. This should be enough for me to quickly demonstrate everything. And as you can see, I'm actually setting this up. Oh, actually, we'll put this one over here, perhaps. Let me see. Where's the switch? There we go. And we want another wire. Oh, man, it's so much. <laughs> it's even complicated just to show all the bits. But never mind. We don't mind that. We actually quite like it. Right. That actually should be lighting that, but uh, hmm. Oh, I've got to turn this on. Now, what we want is another switch, though, before we do. And we'll place this switch there. Right, okay, let's quickly demonstrate this. Now, so far, these lights don't show up. Let's turn this one on. Boom. This one's on. It's non-conductive, so it's not passing power. This one should pass power. There we go. They are literally just lights. They do exactly what it says on the tin. It's an indicator light. You can use that in your designs either to test them or to be tricky. Maybe create uh, some sort of puzzle. If you, if you want to make a house, and I encourage this, a house that is solvable by just being clever the first time you come in, rather than having to do loads of scout missions and then coming down to some sort of luck-based thing or um, bravery. Though I, I kind of like the whole walk of faith idea a little bit, as you may have noticed in my earlier videos. Now, what else have we got? Um, these, this, the same as usual, but very much more expensive, especially the powered trap door, 720. It is crazy. We've also got the dogs and the cats. And then we've got a shotgun. Well, this is an interesting thing. And we've also got a panic button. The panic button and the shotgun are the, other than pets, the only things in the game which can block a family's way out because they will walk over them. The panic button, I will show you now. Uh, if we quickly design this, let me just make a little room for my family, like so, and hook this up to a power supply there. And Evelyn, you will help me demonstrate. My beautiful assistant. Now, there we are. Evelyn will move away, and there we go. You can't turn it off. I'm not even sure if you can turn it on. I'll just double check that myself. Let's see. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate the shotgun, because that will end in me dying. 
Well, actually, I suppose I could show you a little bit. But you'll notice that Evelyn didn't start moving until I spotted her. Until, well, rather, until she spotted me. At that point, Evelyn started making her way out. Now, there are a couple of uh, tricks to this. If any child dies, the mother will abandon her escape and will go to the position of the child. That is honestly quite sad. It's, it's really, really emotional. It's like you've killed one of her children, so you just forget about trying to save yourself and just goes to mourn, and then you kill her as well, probably, because you're all evil. You won't find me doing this, even if they're carrying ridiculous amounts of money, even if I might die if I don't. I still won't. I refuse to become a murderer. But uh, this can't be picked up by anyone else. It is Evelyn's shotgun, as you can see. It's trigger-locked. Now... It has a certain range. Its range is shorter than the range of a pistol. So if you've got a gun, you can still ki uh, kill them because you can shoot further. But uh, only by one tile, I believe. So you've got to you've got to know your distances with that. And I, I don't happen to know because I've never tried to shoot someone. Um, I have used the shotgun on occasion. I should actually study the tapes quite a lot more and I might learn about it. Now, as the panic button has numerous uses and we will be going over that this however before I get anyone's hopes up this is more of a catch-up video I just want to show everyone what's new because this has now been released on Steam it is now actually released and for those who are interested in buying it but don't already know whilst it was in alpha it had a 50% off it was a discounted it's, it's gonna be following a similar pricing plan to Minecraft from what I understand in that it will get more expensive as time goes on rather than cheaper um, its top price is going to be $16 it, it, it was on $8 throughout the alpha it's now on 25% off but in about two weeks uh, it will go up to oh actually it, sorry not two weeks on the 5th of February so actually only six days now It'll go up to its full price, which is $16. So if you like what you see in my previous Council Doctrine videos, although the mechanics have changed slightly since then, they've changed for the better, in my personal opinion, and I will give you a bit of a, a show of that. But this isn't a first taste video, as you probably already guessed from the fact it's not called a first taste video on the, uh, on the channel. This is going to be a catch-up video. I am going to be playing a... And I, I'm going to be back into playing this because, as I will demonstrate... Lots of people are playing this now, and it has become exceedingly fun. There was a contest where you could win real money during the last weeks of Alpha. I didn't participate. I don't believe killing wives should be uh, made into a contest for real money, honestly. <laughs> I lie. I just wouldn't have won. But uh, probably because I wouldn't have killed any wives. But as you can see, it is back to the very early days. Look how many pages of people's houses. Look how very successful they are, my lord. So many fat cats to rob. So many poor people to share my money with. Well, I lie. I will be sharing it with my family. Well, I lie again. I'll be using it to make my house more deadly. So I'm not really sharing it with them. Maybe I'm using it to protect them. Uh, that's probably my chief concern. These are clearly not just newbie houses. Everyone starts with two grand. So uh, my house is probably being robbed as we, as we speak while I'm showing you this, but we can keep going. It goes on for ages until you get down into the very, very low numbers. It is fantastic. You have now got a plethora of different styles of houses to rob, different types of people with varying skills at building traps. Some people are incredibly cunning. Other people are more brute force kind of traps. Other people make their houses out of entirely walls made of pit bulls. You will find everything between an easy house and an extremely hard house to rob, and that's fantastic because that's what the game gradually lost previously. We went from having this huge selection of houses, of, of places to rob, different skill levels. You could be in the top if you were just, you know, the top sort of 20%, if you even had moderate levels of, of, of trap design abilities. Then it kind of bled out until the only people left were like structural engineers and people who NASA is actively studying. Yes, it, it became slightly unfun. But uh, as you can see, we're still going. I'm not going to go to the bottom of the list because it, it does go on for a very long time. You can view your security tapes. Oh, uh, someone has already been there. Wow. Really? Ralph, did you not steal something? Ralph, are you an honorable sort? You had a club. Don't tell me, Ralph. 
Did you did you beat one of my children? You better not have. No? No, you didn't. No. You ran. You ran from the wife with the shotgun. You could have gone to the safe, but you erred on the side of caution. You probably didn't know how far the shotgun could reach. Wise move there, Ralph. What about Anthony? What did you do? Let's see. You came in here without any tools. Now, this is there's a reason for this, and I will tell you what that reason is in just a moment. Don't don't mess with my wife. You wouldn't like the results, honestly. And she wouldn't like you. Her shotgun especially wouldn't like you. Okay, good. And Richard probably just poked his head in, found that I'd already been completely cleared out, and decided, no, okay, bye. This happens if you've recently been robbed. Now, I can return, and there's going to be half of my money there. Let's return to my house. I haven't been completely cleared out. Now, that's a, and that's a new thing. If a couple of people try to rob the house in very quick succession, the first person to succeed will get half of the money, because half the money will be in the safe, half the money is carried by your wife, but the safe will then be emptied. It'll be broken. I'm fairly sure it will have been reset now that I've revisited, or after a certain period of time, only a couple of minutes from what I understand. Now, the thing with the backpacks, we no longer have maps. You can't look at a house and think, oh, right, I want to study this house design before I attack it. That is gone. So you're, gonna, you're back to having very, very secretive plans and tricks. It's no longer about making your trap so complicated that even if you can see the trap, you can't work out how it works. It's just about making the trap. And honestly, I think that's a very good thing because previously when the maps were there, yes, it solved the whole you need to make a combination lock problem because people could just study the combination lock and think, all oh, right, I need to click the first, eighth, and tenth switch and there we go, I'll be able to pass through. But then people made problems so incredibly complex that you could literally st sit there for two or three hours studying the map and not figure it out. And that is from the developer who literally sat there on a house for about two hours studying it and couldn't work out how to solve it. This isn't because he isn't clever. It's because the problem was very, very hard. Made by an incredibly clever person, no doubt, but not the sort of problem that makes the game fun. Now, you can take an infinite amount of things with you on your trip, and you will notice... Everything is so expensive. Oh my god. This used to be two dollars. A hundred dollar bottle of water. Where do they get it? Has it got flecks of gold in it? If so, well, I still wouldn't drink it. I'm not one of those people who you eat gold, even if it is to prove that I've got a lot of money. I think it's kind of stupid, honestly. Hundred dollar drugged dog meat. What is it drugged with? Cocaine? I, I don't even know. But uh, guns extremely expensive. So uh, if someone wants to kill your wife while she's got a shotgun, they're going to have to really want to kill your wife. So uh, revenge killings are probably the norm. $800 for a cutting torch. So people aren't going to be working their way through your, uh, your steel walls anytime soon. $400 saw to get through your wooden walls, which cost you $2 to make. Yeah, if someone wants to break your house, they're going to have to... You will typically have to have a lot of money in your safe for them to be willing to use up the tools required to break in. They can still solve it the normal way, the way you have to solve it, before you can leave your house, because you've got to prove that it's solvable without any tools at all. And when you're doing that, by the way, uh, for those who are new to the game, it is deadly. If you fall in your own pit while you're testing your house, you have died. Word to the wise. It's happened to me on more than one occasion. Sometimes I've even recorded it, much to my dismay. But, uh, so yes, they're going to have to spend several times more money to break your house. It costs $2,400 to use a crowbar. Now, the reason for that is a crowbar is incredibly useful. It does so many things. It can break so many different things, and it can be used to kill people. $800 to cut through steel walls. $150 to have a brick. You can throw a brick. It'll, you can now throw it at a door to open the door, which is very, very useful. Previously, you had to literally be stood next to the door to open it, and you'd open it by walking into it, which meant that if there was a dog on the other side, the dog would now be eating you. You've also got a club. Again, it's a, this one is a cheap and easy brute force weapon for killing things. It doesn't do anything else that I know of. I think you might be able to use it to break a window, but I don't believe you can. But mostly this is for clubbing a dog or, or a chihuahua or a, or a cat. Well, a chihuahua is a dog, almost, kind of. I think it's a cat pretending to be a dog, honestly. But uh, you can use the club to, to kill someone, but obviously if a wife's got a shotgun, you really don't want to get close enough to have to do that. You can use the door stop to prevent uh, an electronic door from closing, a powered door. 
Wire cutters can now be used on grates that aren't powered. Previously, there weren't many things you could do to a grate if it wasn't powered, and that was part of a lot of trap designs, because you couldn't break it unless it was turned on. So if the problem was if you stepped on it, it turned on, there was nothing you could do to protect yourself. Well, now you can actually break it. I don't know if that counts for water as well. It might. I might test it. Cost costs $1,200 to get explosives to break a concrete wall. And then, this is why the, the powered pits cost so much. Cost costs $1,800 to get a ladder. Several of my previous designs used powered pits. This had the ladders cost this much. I'm sure I would have been a very, very wealthy man for a very long time. But I still can't get over that. 2,400 grand. Uh, sorry, 2.4 grand. 2,400 grand, my lord. For a crowbar. It's, that costs more than low-grade explosives, or maybe even high-grade explosives. Depends how thick these concrete walls are. That's just bonkers. But, you can buy an infinite amount of these. So, to prove that, and they all stack. So, I've now wasted my money on seven things of water. I'm sorry, family. I've squandered our wealth on gold-flecked water. I would, I would share it, honestly. I really would. If I could give it to you, I would. So that at least when someone comes around to try and kill you all, you can die having experienced the joys and possibly the humiliation of drinking water with gold in it. But... That covers more or less how this works. So, backpack, everything stacks. So now instead of being able to take, how many, eight items with you, you can take eight stacks of items. And the stacks are more or less infinite. They might have some, some restriction, might be like 100 units of whatever, but uh, for all intents and purposes, infinite. Now, here's the problem. I'm about to make someone very happy if they ever wanted gold-flecked water. Is when you're scouting, and this is what you're going to have to do from now on. There's a lot of uh, nice little things you can do here to uh, filter out names or ignore names if you don't want to rob them. Perhaps you've been there, you've decided, no, that, that is a whole bag of nope, the walls are made of pit bulls, and you just ignore it. It'll only show up in the list again if there's a significant change to the house. But uh, let's go somewhere. You, Walter Robert uh, McCardle. Let's rob your house. Hello. Now, this is another thing is these won't start chasing you. Previously, all animals on the map, including the family, actually, I'm, I don't mean to insinuate that my family are animals, but, well, you know, they kind of are. They, you know, humans aren't anything special, except, you know, we think and do things that humans do. But uh, everything on the map would be aware that you were robbing the house, and they would be trying to do something. The animals that try to match you or try to get close to you would be trying to move around like they are now. The family would be heading for the exit. Now... Nothing responds to you until you do something. Until you move around and they've seen you, they, they don't know you're there. But once they've seen you, they know exactly where you are no matter what. You'll also notice that the uh, darkness has closed in a little bit more. It's a lot more cagey now and I actually like that. You can't easily see through doors anymore the way you could before. You can sort of, if you get really close like this, you can still sort of see. And like that... You can still sort of see. Sort of. I'm not going to pop up there because that'll be death. Uh, if we pop over here. I can't see if there's a dog down there, but I can see that there's no dog over here. Now, the problem with this is that I could open these doors and there could be a dog a little ways away. But once he knows I'm there... Oh, hello. Uh, I was just talking about you. Um, I'm, I, I, I don't want to die yet. I've, I've got all of this gold water to live for. Please stop. Ah, uh, quick decision. I think I've already doomed myself, but no, we're going to go this way. Am I going to succeed? Am I going to die? Who knows? I'm going to try my hardest not to. Ah, uh, I've doomed myself. Well, do you want some water? Can I, can I give you some water? Can I sprinkle her on you? Can I spray you on your nose with water and make you... No, no. He's got those bloodshot eyes. He wants, he wants blood. He's going to get it. Ah, uh, I was killed by Pitbull. Oh, well. Walter Robert McCardle now has seven bottles of gold-flecked water. Well done, Robert. Drink them lavishly. In fact, make a fountain out of them. But there we go. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. I've, I've left Evelyn and the kids. Oh, man. We've now got Tony, Andy, and Elizabeth. Oh, that's actually quite a cool name. But yes, this has been a catch-up video more than anything else. I just wanted to show you some of the things that have changed and to explain how I'm going to be recording videos. 
I will probably have already begun recording videos by the time this uploads, but uh, I'm going to be recording the way I always kind of said I would, but never really got around to doing, and that is I'm going to record a family from start to finish. I will record it all before I start uploading any of it at all. You've proven to me that I can't trust some of you, probably only one or two of you really, but if I show you what I'm designing as I'm designing it, my wife is dead. It's, it's a foregone conclusion. Maybe my children will survive, but even that isn't guaranteed. I mean, it's hard enough to keep them alive when just random people are enting, entering my base trying to kill me, or rather steal all my loot and kill my wife, but uh, yeah, I'm, I don't fancy just letting everyone see my secrets. But before we go, I will show you a little setup. Maybe something you can do with your starting money. Let's see. Um, now, as you saw, it's very expensive to try and uh, break walls, so use them a lot. Use them all over the place. Don't, don't leave an, an open area. Like, for example, this is claustrophobic. It's quite frightening. This is not. This is completely, I, I mean, you know, aside from the fact I can see the safe. That isn't frightening at all. Keep people guessing. Don't let them know where things are. Now, what we want is something down here, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll get something there. Now we're going to want someone to come all the way back here. We want a little window. Now you'll see what I'm doing in a few moments. And then we'll have this come up here. We want uh, some doors there, I think. Yes. Okay. And some doors there. Okay. We are going to be using our children. No, that sounds horrible. We are going to be letting our son help in the defense of the home. He's always wanted to. He's never been allowed to. I've always, uh, you know, told him, no, no, it's too dangerous. In fact, there's nothing even your mother can do. Just, just run away. Try to survive, is all I've ever told him before. But no, now we're actually going to give him a job. He's going to be the hero of this house. And should I perish, he will live on. He will have learned my tricks, my wily ways. Now, we want a panic button. Where is the panic button? We will want this... Um, what we want this to do is to activate a switch. We wanted to force something to, yeah, about here, right. What we want then is, yeah, we're gonna have to move this wall back a little bit first. Let's see, we'll move all of this back. It's sometimes just easier to uh, replace everything with the same tile and then you can delete it just by clicking on it again. Now, what I would like from you is to be about here instead. So we'll replace this with wired walls there and up here. Now, it doesn't matter that someone could cut these walls because if they did, they'd be dooming themselves. That's a very common thing in my designs. I often make my designs such that uh, if someone breaks the system, they've, that's the worst thing they could do. They're going to doom themselves by doing that. Now, what we want is to make this so that when our son rose, runs over the panic button, it's going to trigger this switch. Now, we want a switch that is usually on, but will turn off. Ah, this is the problem. Can I rotate this? I don't think I can. Ah, that is going to be a little bit of a tricky situation for us then. Um, hmm. Let's, re -mo let's move this around. Let's uh, reorientate this house. I was trying to orientate it down here, but uh, that is not the right way with, for what we want to do. I need this voltage triggered uh, switch to be interacted with by my son. So we'll have the dog here instead. Now what we want is for the dog not to be visible from the beginning. We don't want the dog to be chasing someone right from the onset. We want that to come later. Ideally, if they come down here, and, and what we'll be doing is we'll be building this system to force them down here if they know what's best for them. But that will force them then to deal with the dog. So we'll bring this over here, and we'll have the uh, way up over on this side instead. Yes, 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 I know, I know. Oh, can they walk over the power plant? No, I didn't think they could. Right, now, what we're going to be having over here is we'll have the voltage trig, uh, the panic button, sorry, and this needs to be turned on normally. So the voltage triggered inverted switch. So normally this is powered and uh, 
sorry, normally this is letting power through when it is unpowered. But if a, a signal came through the top there, it would cause this little arm here to shunt down, thus breaking the circuit. I'll show you what I mean. As you can see, because the power is flowing there, it's broken the circuit. So this line is not sending power. And that's what we want. And we want this wall coming through. Let's move you guys up here just for the moment. Don't worry, don't worry. It'll only be temporary. Right, okay, now we've got another pit bull. And this is going to be a bit of a trap. I mean, both of the pit bulls are traps more than, than attacks. I, I, I don't like making systems that... Uh, where the the wrong move will force them to jump out on you. I like them to be behind you, kind of driving you forward, so that if you if you're still, you know, got your wits about you, you can still make it through. It's not an automatic fail. They're not going to appear in front of you and bar the way. They're going to appear behind you and give you an incentive not to retreat. But uh, one of the things that has changed that I haven't covered is probably the biggest way you're going to make money in this now is through killing robbers. You get bounties when they die. It isn't just that they drop their equipment. Every robber is worth a certain amount of money based on how many places he's robbed successfully. Or she. Well, it's always a he, but you know what I mean. And as a result, you can actually make more money by making a clever house that encourages people to try and rob you, but ultimately kills them, than you can by going out and robbing other places. And I will probably be doing that more often than not. But there we go. Here's our little house. So... We will be putting Tony over there. I want... Yeah, Tony, you go up there. Andy, you go down here. You are on guard duty. And uh, Elizabeth, you hide. I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't want anything to happen to any of my family, but uh, you are not going to be serving any specific purpose in this trap. So I just want you out of harm's way, please. Right. There we go. Now, we're going to have a nice big area in here just to kind of lull people. Uh, we could have separate doors you can in fact you can do all sorts of things over here put doors in these places to give someone uh, a place that they could go incorrectly it's basically a, a dead end so if they're being chased by one of the dogs it's going to probably lead to their doom now the final part of this puzzle is to include a shotgun and the shotgun should be out of sight generally now this is the plan and this is as you can see i mean you could make this tighter Bring the walls in so there's not much, there's not as many, uh, there's not as much space so you're not using up as many wall sections to, to bring the money down. But 200 bucks should be enough to encourage someone to attack. But as always, test your system first. And the easiest way to test it when pit bulls are part of the active trap, replace them with chihuahuas. Chihuahuas will follow you the same way pit bulls will so you can see how they're going to move but they won't kill you. They'll just hurt you by gnawing on your ankles like the excitable little things that they are. Now, the thing here is I don't... Right, that, that actually works. This is mimicking the way the, the screen will move when we're, when we're in robbery mode. If we move it around and anything off screen won't react. So if the, if the chihuahua is over here, then when I'm here, it's not going to see me because it's over there. But by being there, it'll see me and it'll react to me. So the plan is, if they go down here, they'll probably just bail. If they come down here, they'll activate the Chihuahua, which is fine as long as they're here, because there's glass there, they won't hurt them. But the moment they come up here, they're now being chased. And that's, that's something to put the Frighteners up them. Now, over here, what we want is to come up there. Now, actually, that's, that's going to be a problem. I need, to make this fair, I need you to be about there. Yeah. We'll move the window there as well. And place... A wall there. I don't want Andy to be activated too uh, too early. He will be activated when someone sees him, but Tony will be activated the moment the robber steps here. Tony will then be heading for the gun. If you rush up here towards Tony, she'll be in front of you. She will kill you. If, however, you just stand there, Tony's activated, bail. Just run away, probably either out or down there, in which case you've doomed yourself, or down here, in which case you're safe, and then just wait. Wait out of sight, Tony will run by. You'll be safe. Then, when it, the coast is clear, you walk out, the chihuahua's following you, and you are free to run to the safe. But however, the moment you step in this area, anywhere from here to there, or anywhere up here, Andy's going to be on the march. And once Andy gets to this switch, 
the other Chihuahua, or Pitbull, will be released, meaning you've now got two dogs chasing you. So, this is, so if you have the, the means to disable one of them, you might not have the means to disable both, or it's just going to add to the panic. You might make a wrong turn, at which point you're probably doomed. Let's see how this works then. We'll just try it out with the Chihuahuas. This isn't going to be the system I'm going to be using, but uh, I thought I'd just throw something together quickly with the starting money to show you what you could possibly do. So far, so good. No Chihuahuas have been activated. If I move up here... Hello? Okay, Andy isn't on the move. However, Tony is, so... Oh, you are really, really close. Do not want to die, thanks. That was actually really risky. Now, we bail out. The moment we step over here, Andy's going to be on the march. And the door's open. But that dog hasn't seen us. So as long as we don't try to escape, we'll be fine. If we go this way, we're doomed. If we go this way, we win. However, I don't need to do that. We'll replace it with the pit bulls. And that will be the end of this one. Alright, let's replace this with pit bulls. I don't know if uh, this is actually going to kill anyone before I start a new family and start a new house, but it'll be interesting to find out. I might even record it if it does, or, or show the videotapes. But uh, this should actually work. This system is now live. I would actually like Andy to be a little bit closer, come to think of it, though. Let's replace some of these things. Uh, I actually, no, I can't, because if I tried to have the wiring following Andy there, it wouldn't work. But that'll do. Let's uh, see how this works. So we come up here, we activate Tony. Go on, Tony. I want to see how close you are. Right, okay. That's good enough because I can easily see when it's safe to come back up. Now being chased by Pitbull. That, that dog there, that's called Lady. That one's Tramp. And we are safe. There are 200 bucks available for anyone who feels brave enough to try and take it. You are welcome to try if this house is still there. When you see it, it might be full of money. Who knows? Just don't kill my wife or my kids. That's all I ask. If you have to be killed by them... Just suck it up and be the better man slash woman. You are robbing me anyway. You're in the wrong, not me. I may have a house full of ill-gotten gains, but, uh, well, actually, it isn't even ill-gotten. It'll probably be all people who tried to steal my stuff. The fools. Upon this, oil I never sought them. Love a conquest. Hither brought them. But that is it for this episode. I am really, really excited to be playing this again. So, I shall see you in a day or two, or however long it takes, for my first family to succumb to the treacherous and evil ways of castle doctrine. Take care. I'm judging by the fact that you're still here, you noticed that there was more time on the video even after I said take care. How very observant of you. Your powers of observation shall be rewarded. Possibly. This is the mighty quest for epic loot. It is a game that is currently in beta. Closed beta, mind you. It will be in closed beta until the very end of February, from what I understand. It is a game that many of you may have already heard of. For those who haven't, it is very similar to Castle Doctrine. If by very similar, you mean kind of similar in the same way that a Disney movie is similar to a gothic novel. But... It deals with the same sort of things. You build a castle in both games. In this one, you do so literally. A floating castle, but a castle nonetheless, that you then fill with traps and monsters and all kinds of other goodies. The object is to lure people into your castle so you can kill them and then steal their loot. Or go to other people's castles to rob them without being killed. These tasks are varying between very difficult and very easy, depending on who's trying to rob you or who you're trying to rob. There are three different characters currently, though I believe there's a fourth on the way. There is the ra uh, ranger, the archer. He's got an eye patch, an archer without any depth perception. Fantastic. There's also a knight and a, a mage. There's traps. There's, you, you build it up. In, it's like Tetris. You, you have little, well, not quite like Tetris, but you have different uh, sort of blocks that you make your castle out of, and then you fill it up with monsters and things. It's a very, very fun game, and I happen to have some beta keys. Uh, anyone who's, who's in the beta, in the closed beta, does have a couple of beta keys, at least I believe they all do. I certainly do. Now, again, I said this game is kind of like Castle Doctrine, and it is. In the sense that you're building a place to ultimately defend your riches from being robbed whilst possibly also robbing other people. The similarity breaks down a little bit when you actually get to the meat and bones about it. 
because this is basically it's all colorful jumpy you know you've got rpg aspects you you equip your guys with with gear various amulets weapons armor potions that sort of thing whereas in castle doctrine you equip yourself with burglary tools like ladders and blow torches and guns if you're a wife killing maniac however this game is equally fun. Well, maybe not equal. It depends really on, on, on what you feel like doing. A, a, a brutal documentary on, on the human condition or a happy, jumpy, I'm going to steal people but no one's really going to get upset because they're not going to really lose much like their wife. You wife killing maniacs. Nevertheless, I do have a couple of beta keys and for those who are interested, just shoot me a tweet on Twitter. First come, first serve. There's no competition or anything like that. Just uh, let me know and I will give them out until I've got none left. I've got six at the moment. If you also happen to have beta keys and don't have anyone else to give them to, you've given them to everyone, uh, all of your friends, and you've still got a couple more and you don't want them to just gather dust on your Steam uh, inventory until the open beta starts, by all means get in touch. I'm sure I'll be able to find a good home. But uh, yes, so that's the little sneaky thing. I can't record any of this yet because it's still in beta, alas, but I'm having a lot of fun and I probably will be recording some of it once it goes into open beta or whenever they lift the restrictions on recording. But uh, yes, well done for noticing that there was a little bit left on the video. Very, very clever of you. But for now, this really is the end of the video, so uh, do take care.